Here we are today in Ely, site of the famous Herod with the Wakes Rebellion. Herod with the Wake, one of my favourite historical figures, put a serious dent in the armour of William the Conqueror, William the Bastard, and he, against insurmountable odds, even managed to defeat him and his men in battle, having him really on the ropes at one point. Herod with the Wake, Wake meaning watchful, is a man that's synonymous with going against the grain, fighting against, as I say, insurmountable odds, maybe maybe akin to modern figures such as Gerard Batten or, or the Ketz brothers in Norfolk, fighting on behalf of the common man. And it's thought that also Herowood's life was a contributory factor in creating the legend that became Robin Hood, although where Herowood resided was more of a swamp than the forest. Now, many people speculate over the motivation behind Herowood's rebellion. Was it, was it that he, he wanted a resurgence of the Vikings? Perhaps he was working on behalf of the Danes? Was it that he was a true Anglo-Saxon warrior and he wanted to give England back to the English people? Or perhaps it was for selfish reasons. Maybe the land that his family had occupied in Peterborough, he just wished to regain those lands. I know I've got my opinions, but I think Hereward, whatever his motivations were, really came a long way from being a young rebel, starting out in life with quite a turbulent persona. Not only was he outlawed by the king at the time, Edward the Confessor, but also by his own father. And it seems following this that he did redeem himself somewhat, tales of somewhat far-fetched of fighting and killing a polar bear that had uh, had cornered a country person and and also saving seems more credible saving a woman from um, an unwanted marriage in Cornwall so he became quite the hero and his battle prowess became quite renowned throughout Europe and his leadership skills also which enabled him to stage such a successful rebellion now, William wasn't a king that was particularly well liked, given his tyrannical nature and his power drive to sculpt the entirety of England in his own image, juxtaposed with the likes of King Canute, a Dane himself, but someone who sought more to assimilate and even had Anglo-Saxons in his kingdom rewarding their loyalty. Now, Hereward had William on the back foot to such a degree that after William's failed tactic of trying to starve Herowood's men, having them cornered at the Fenlands, not realising that Herowood knew the Fens so well and had such farmland around him that he was able to keep his men sustained, William then resorted to using, akin to the way modern, modern climate zealots tend to make uh, wild predictions that New York will be underwater, even though it looks drier than ever to me. Um, the polar ice cap capsule melt, apparently more ice there than ever. Um, acid rain, numerous false predictions, and and perhaps William was the originator of of this type of warfare to keep Herowood's men fearful on the back foot. Perhaps once his his witches that stood atop their pillars cast spells and hexes on Herowood that they'd have a psychological advantage over his men and then William would be able to pounce or maybe even hoping that Herowood's men would retreat against these odds. Now, although the, the mainstream media is on the side of the climate zealots these days, Herowood was able to see through this and even fell the witches and one allegedly breaking her neck as she, as she fell to her death after trying to supposedly cast hexes on Herowood and his men. After this tactic failed, it seemed that Herowood bowls like a bull, portrayed a potter and infiltrated William's kingdom, perhaps to find out his next battle tactic so he'd be ready for him in the next encounter. Either way, apparently, Herowood was captured and then released, he was thought not to have been tall enough 
to be Hero of the Week. His, his own legend preceded him. Now, as for Hereward's motivation, for me, I can only conclude that given that the Viking battle led by Harold Godwinson's brother happened only a few years earlier and he didn't join the ranks there and as far as just saving his own lands he wouldn't just have joined William's army his, his battle prowess and his leadership skills being so renowned at this point surely he would have been able to climb the ranks so for me I have to conclude that he was a true Anglo-Saxon rebel the last Anglo-Saxon rebel Arrow with the wake. Well, I heard the word king a lot.